Hello, hello. So, it's about 5.30 in the evening, and I just wanted to do another tour of the front, because things are looking good. You have the uh, prickly pear blossoms, and there's so many more buds on there that are all gonna pop open in the next couple of days. Have this uh, Celosia, I believe that's what it's called. It looks good, and everything is just looking wonderful. Cone flowers are beginning to open up. They look great. We have the petunia. Looks amazing so pure and white and fresh next to the uh, nasturtium blossom and the coleus uh, everything looks good I still have yet to look at this rose and deal with why those leaves are turning uh, yellow at the bottom but I'll get to that tomorrow on my day off um, we have the uh, lemon cypress and the uh, creeping jenny looks good. I just love that yellowy contrast amongst all the other colors. I have the balloon flower here which looks like it's about to open up any day. And um, calicacia. Elephant ears look good. Dinosaur kale looks looks good. Uh, it's a couple holes, but other than that, there's very, not very many holes um, in the leaves. I think I'm gonna let this patch go to seed. I'm gonna save the seed. I have some in the back that I've been eating, but I'm just growing these purely for the season. If you've never seen kale blossoms you've missed out because they're quite amazing they're a pretty uh, little yellow flower here's some uh, lamb's quarter which is a weed because it's unwanted but it's a very nutritious uh, wild edible uh, I'll do some yard cleaning tomorrow um, Petunia, Nasturtium, a little bit of that urban noise. I've repeated things that are over there, over here, just to kind of like pull that same interest over here. This is my second year pepper plant that I overwintered and it hasn't skipped a beat. It's putting out flowers. Yeah, I think it needs to be watered. But that's doing really good. I have this star gooseberry, which is the mother plant for many of the cuttings that I've produced. Um, it's doing really well. Chef Lear's plant. This was in the house. I've, it, so it's struggled for a bit, and now it's starting to perk up. Um, but it's doing pretty, pretty good as well. This branch is a little, a little wonky here, but it just needs to park up a little bit in the sun. It'll be fine. Oh my God. These people scare me. <laughs> this is my, um, this is my um, project that I worked on a couple of days ago. It's looking good. Nothing has died. It could stand to be, I guess, watered a little bit. These are succulents, so you don't really have to water them too much. Um, so I'll give it another couple of days before I actually give it some water. These are some, oh, oh, wait a minute now. These are some willow <laughs> that obviously need water. Uh, I need to get those in the ground somewhere. Some pussy willow cuttings that I just couldn't bear to throw away. 
Look at those roots. It's amazing. If you want to feel like you um, know what you're doing, just try to root some, some willow. They, they root with no, act, no real work. And they make you feel like you, you're an expert. A rain barrel. It's nice and full. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Loosen that up there. Look at that. I'm a professional. Oh, so I use this as um, peppermint soap. And I'll put this in that spray bottle here. And I just kind of like spray everything down like the um, porch. And when I had the ant problem, I flushed the plant with this because it's all natural. And it really did help, you know, with the ants and helping them to relocate and get out of the plant. So it's like a peppermint soap all natural but I just wanted to show you the garden at, in the evening time in the city this is how we live here my neighbor has corn and it looks like kale and peppers my other neighbor is see I can't even see it now I'm, I'm happy about that my magnolia has finally filled in and it blocks me from seeing those unsightly tires that they like to see in their front, keep in their front yard, which is ultimately their business. So, the Magnolia has done a really good job of um, blocking that, so I'm happy about that. My sunflowers here in the front will be big and mammoth soon enough. So, I'm, I'm good. Hey, I hope, I hope you all are doing well. Uh, I hope um, your um, your health is good. Your garden's even better, you know. Um, I appreciate all the support that everybody gives me, and uh, it's full. Let me cut this off. I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the channel definitely growing and definitely becoming. Um, a place to share and talk and, and work out some problems and and um, talk about gardening and go on some trips and take you along. I'm I'm so looking forward to that. This week has been difficult for me. I've experienced two people on hospice who have passed away, and uh, I'm not going to say that I'm sad. I'm going to say that, I, you know, that transition of um, leaving in that way is, um, is a rough one, especially on the people who are left behind. And I think the people who are transitioning have a good time or a good, I want to say good. <laughs> They're able to, um, to really um, close out some of their accounts. If that makes sense, you know, the one lady, she was 80, and she worked on her outfit that she was going to wear. Uh, she said, I just wanted to know what I was going to have on. I just wanted, I wanted to pick out my outfit. And I said, I understand that. She said, but what I'm not going to do is put the red lipstick on. I said, why you ain't going to wear the red lipstick? She said, well, you know what they say about women in red lipstick. I said, I don't know. Tell me. And I just thought that was very sweet. And I was just um, very grateful to um, be able to spend that moment with her. And um, it's a sweet one. And then the other person was extremely young. And they just had some um, pre-existing health conditions that um, just, just, you know, went, went south. But um, they also were able to, um, I guess, be surrounded by uh, loved ones and, and close out those accounts and and um and transition into the uh what's next um for the, for your spirit and um so experiencing that taught me a couple of things that life is wonderful and it'll take you far and wide and you'll meet some cool people but when it's all said and done it's done <laughs> and um It'll be all those experiences you have that um, 
you know, not comfort you in the end, but what what you'll draw from. So go out there and have as many experiences as you as you want, because you're you're going to draw from those later. You know, go do the do now. Go travel now. Go go get in some trouble now. Go make a bunch of mistakes because you'll draw from all of those things later. It's not for you to dwell on now and try to figure out now because it really won't make much, very much sense. I don't know if the male person's in distress <laughs> or having an existential crisis. She's driving down the block, beeping her horn. God bless her. Um, but anyway, um, I'll close with just saying this, you know, live life to the fullest and draw from that account later um, because you'll need it. Um, it'll be a source of um, pride as you glide right on out this life, you know, and um, it'll be a beautiful thing. So peace and blessings and I will see you all later hopefully but if not you've added to my account in a big way and I will draw from it later